So back as in the last video, I talked about all these uh, revisions to the PG printer itself, P22, and all the different things we were going to do to the hardware to make the printer more capable. And now that's all come to fruition. The printer can now do far, far better than P18, the printer that we launched with. So we've chosen to print our first uh, figurine. We've, we've picked a very simple one. We, uh, we actually printed her upside down so that we wouldn't have to deal with any of the support material issues. And you can see that there's actually, there's a bubble right here inside the print. And what's actually happening here is that we're printing the outside edge. We're actually printing a hollow shell. And then as the printer rises, it's filling with resin. And so you end up with sort of a, a watertight print full of resin. Now if, you, if you'd like, you can not finish printing the very top, and then you can drain the resin out and get a hollow object, or you can kind of cheat and keep the resin in there and cure it after, giving you a solid object. So that's a really sneaky way of speeding up this printer. Basically, you only need to print the shell of your object, and you can still have a solid object that if you had printed all of the solid area, would have taken possibly 10 times longer to print. This little heart is actually one of the most impressive prints we've done yet. And that's because it was actually printed like this. So you can see just how fast we can climb over, almost straight over. And the printer didn't struggle with that at all. So I need to do some more prints that, are, that have an even steeper climb in as the, as the print is rising and just see how fast we can turn a corner and come in along the uh, X and Y axis. This vase is an impressively smooth print, especially here at the top. I'm just, I'm so happy with how much of an angle we can climb out at and still have a smooth walled print. There's some things going on here that will improve. Here, because we're not able to shut the laser off yet, we're wrapping to the vase and wrapping away to wait for the, the dripping to come, the, the level of the resin to come up, we can actually see the spot that we've come back to every time to print the next layer. And then also you can see that the vase is a little bit off-center and that's happening because our whole uh, print is off-center in the entire area that it can print in and so when the laser moves over to wait it's remembering that it's gone over there and it's not coming back exactly where we want. So we can expect this vase to be looking perfectly uh, straight up and down, and we can expect this line, this curl line in here to be gone. So in P22, we solved a whole bunch of problems. We added dampening to the mirrors, we lowered the mass of the mirrors, giving us a higher speed, and we focused the magnetic core to give us more efficiency and higher deflection. And we've just, we've done all these small things. Now in P23, there's still some things left to improve. Uh, right now our mirrors, the, the spring of our mirror still has memory. So when we, when we point over here and come back to zero, it, it remembers that we were over here and doesn't come all the way, all the way back to zero. And uh, that is wreaking havoc on, uh, on us doing a complicated print because you go into so many different positions. Now, I've come up with a new mirror assembly that uses uh, elastics instead of thread, and uh, that mirror assembly has almost no memory at all. So one of Ryland's goals with this printer is to be able to print from basically any device that can play audio. And uh, that's been basically the, the whole reason for building the circuit. Uh, some devices are AC coupled, some are DC coupled. Uh, some devices have much lower audio levels out, some have much higher. 
uh, we've got compensation in our circuit for that. So basically the whole point of this is so that any device that can play audio should be able to print on the PG printer. One key thing we've done now is come up with a system so that we can turn the laser on and off at will and still move the mirrors while the laser is off. So the ability to turn on and off the laser while still being able to move the mirrors is important um, because it allows us to position the mirrors to, to the location that we want the laser to turn on and then turn on the laser. Uh, in the past we've quickly moved the laser out of the way and uh, hope that resin didn't cure as we moved quickly over it but basically this will allow us to turn it off get in position turn it on and do a nice clean print without hairs hanging all off of it so how we're turning the laser on and off with the AM system is by changing the carrier frequency um, we're not actually tuning an AM frequency so basically anything above a cutoff um, becomes a DC signal through the AM system but uh, what now we're discriminating between a lower carrier and a higher carrier so when the higher carrier is present it'll turn on the laser when the lower carrier is present the laser turns off we're doing it definitely with the AM system and uh, ready to try out a, the same idea with the DC coupled so uh, very hopeful about that that's gonna make the programming the rapids which is moving the laser while not trying to cure the resin. Uh, so James is gonna have a much easier time writing the code for that. So during the development of the hardware P22, we've also worked a lot on the software, and James Cooper has done so much in this field. He has basically come up with a new uh, calibration system that's very fast and efficient. It only takes about 30 seconds to recalibrate your printer. James has also implemented something we're call, calling sublayers. We're printing so many layers now that we're printing multiple layers per drip. And that's okay because the drip still takes, uh, takes time to flow into the container, so it's sort of a steady rise that's happening. And basically the sublayers are sort of like six or seven layers that get printed in between every drip. And that's what's allowing us to, to print very, very thin layers that don't print hard enough to uh, dry the, the top layer of the print. We still have a meniscus that's wet on top of the print the entire time. So we're having a lot less issues with the, the surface tension breaking over and over, uh, causing that big layering that we saw in the original prints. Having said that, there's still one part of our tool chain that we're really struggling with, and that's uh, using Slicer or Skeenforge to actually make the G-code for the printer. It's really tricky to get complex models to come out of these slicers, uh, in just the right way for the peachy printer. So that's something that we'll be improving on uh, in the next week. After dealing with the few issues that are left, like the laser turning on and off, the circuit, slicer, and memory in the mirrors, I think that we're gonna have a very solid printer. You can expect to see lots more prints for, from us much more often. Thank you backers. It's just been wonderful to have all this support and I look forward to continuing to develop this printer for everyone.